I'm here this weekend to actually put in a long weekend to get a cage in the car with Kyle and Randy from Chrome to Envy. Check them out. That's uh, wasn't that bad, was it? No, it wasn't bad. <laughs> Wait, it's sleeping really, it wasn't bad. <laughs> it was super interesting. Whether it was upside down, or right side up, on the rotisserie, all the doors closed like it was on its tires. I thought it'd be nice if we could roll the car upside down, but Randy's a good enough welder that he ah screw that. I like but, jungle gyms. Yeah. Anyway. We got a cage in the car. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna get seat boost done. instant. Done. It's gonna work. Straight up and over, and that's it. We're done for the day. Turbos start choking it out at about 700 horse. Yeah. Green line is flat. That's good for what you're doing. It worked. Yeah. <laughs> it seemed like they'd be a total joke and not worth the time. <laughs> the transmission that we're getting built is set to handle about 800 foot-pounds of torque, so we can figure out how to mate it to this LS, and I've got some wonky ideas on that. Does that make sense? Basically, we're putting in a cage. All right, so I want to introduce you guys to Kyle. Uh, Kyle contacted us through uh, just our email address and said I want to help build the cage, so I took him up on the offer. We're going to go build the cage. Yeah, so, <laughs> we're going to try you at least. <laughs> try to. <laughs> so you've built a cage before? i uh, built a couple of little small projects. Built some uh, cages for Eve Destruction, if anyone knows what that is. <laughs> then I uh, helped when I was at the University of Guelph. I was building the Formula SAE car. It's a little two-roll cage uh, race car. Um, competes against 100 universities. So you got a whole trailer set up here? Yeah, we got a little setup here for mobile fabrication. We got a workbench and two bender mounted to it, so you don't have to have any permanent mounts. You can move it yeah. around wherever the build is. Right on, so you want to get into doing this more or what? I'd like to. I mean, it's fun and it's yeah. uh, always interesting. <laughs> yeah. It keeps you on your toes. So we got some 120,000 thick, yep. inch and three quarter OD. Yeah. And uh, gonna bend, bend it up and bend it up. try and get it in. Uh, we put the seat in, I put my helmet on. And uh, <laughs> in case you're wondering why we got a four door, um, the cage is basically gonna go, <laughs> the hoop is gonna go right about here, <laughs> and then the turbos start right about here. There's not a whole lot of room though. That's the yeah. joys of being six foot three or six foot four. But anyway, let's <laughs> take some measurements, let's get at it. Yeah, let's get it. Done. The tube will fit through that perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> What's happening with the rear windows? Uh, I haven't decided idea. yet. If the doors were going to be welded shut, then I was going to take the back window out and just cover this with Lexan. Yeah. Right? I might even still put the Lexan like behind the door yeah. and make it so the door can open <laughs> so that we can still do what we have yeah. to through the side here and still have the glass up here type mm -hmm. of thing, right? So more than likely count on these triangle windows coming out and this being a piece of Lexan. Like that's, yeah, yeah. that's a lot easier actually. But this is all gonna be boxed in too, eh? Yeah. I can't have this. You can just go rots and door latches and get some uh, sliding gate latches. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wanna pass out. <laughs> Unless we got like a, a little tube coming out here with like air going in my helmet or something. Yeah. Fresh air. <laughs> I'm just choking myself out from the gig exhaust. So if you can see this, I drilled a hole at the bottom there where the pipe is going to go in and then we're going to build a box for the cage to sit on. I got lots of cardboard kicking around so you just kind of make a, a stencil of of what, what fits nice. So I'll copy that, put it in steel um, and then I'll cut out this piece right here to weld on the sides and then we'll pull the top plate off. Then we can set the bar in the hole. Then we can weld the top of the bar, and then lift up on it, slide the plate underneath, and then drop the uh, drop the roll bar on top, and then weld it on top of the plate. Actually, that's that's really nice. Yeah. Are we good? Wonderful. So okay. we can mark it. Cut it. I cut it already. Yeah. And then, how does the doors close? I think that's. I think the doors curl way away. Yeah. If there's an inner on the door, it would. Right. Be. Yeah. 
No, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Like I said, as long as that bar and, and how, yeah, how much okay, room you got right. there, because... I have three quarters of an inch over here. Okay, because I, I only have a quarter. So we can... Yeah. Now half. But, yeah, no, I'm okay with that. Yeah, that's, that's pretty well nice perfect. Close, yeah. All right, we got a nice start on the cage yesterday. Um, as you can see, the roll cage follows the pillars real nice, the windshield and the, the side there. Yeah, Kyle looks like he knows what he's doing, which is good. He's taking his time, doing it right. So we're gonna run the uh, pillars down the side to a, so my helmet can knock against that. We got a nice tight fit up in the corner there. Yeah, that's one thing because I'm so tall that my helmet's gonna constantly hit that bar, so you gotta be careful of that. And then uh, build another six by six box in the kick panel there. And then lastly, we'll try and figure out how to put an X down into the corners onto the wheel wells. Problem is we can't drop it down unless we cut a hole in the wheel well. I don't really want to do that, um, but we'll figure that out as we go, I guess. So. Um, yeah, a little slower start to the morning. I didn't breathe in any of that smoke trying to hold my breath just because there's layers underneath. It's like two layers in the car and then there's something underneath there that just smokes like crazy. So I can feel that. Got a little bit of a headache this morning, but um, a couple coffees and we'll uh, get back at it. Here we go. So the way we chose to build this cage is you build it from the top down basically. So. Everything in the car is referenced to the roof line. So on the roof, we've got a center line, and that is what we base everything off of. We measured out the tube to a 12 foot length, which is a typical roll hoop, 10 to 12 feet. Um, we went over a little bit so that you have extra distance because down in the bottom, we have boxes here. Once we get it to the size we want, we cut the tube down and slide the plate underneath. You'll have a uh, tube that you bent up to 90 degrees, and each bender is gonna be a little bit different, but you'll have a spot that you, every time you bend a tube, you mark that spot, and that is where you put it in your bender. You know that, you use it every time. So we take that tube, we fit it up here in the roof, we match it to the bend that we have coming down to the uh, B pillar, and you mark that spot on the roof. Once you've got that mark, take that, you measure it to the center line, because everything's referenced to the center, you mark that on your tube. You throw that in the bender, you bend it to the angle you want. That angle comes from measuring up the B pillar. So you can take a dial angle gauge, Use that magnet on the B pillar, get your angle, ours is 60 degrees. So we take that, we go into the bender, we bend it to 60 degrees. Once you got that done, you can put it back in the car, test fit it, see if you like that angle, see if it looks right. If it's a little too little, bend it a little more. If it's too much, then you kind of got to start over again. <laughs> so don't bend it too much. Um, then you just got to make it whatever's going to add to 90 because from, he from the top of the roof, to your uh, bottom of your B pillar is to be 90 degrees, obviously. So we had to bend the bottom 30 degrees. Because your bend is now on the inside, you use the end of this last bend. So wherever that bend finished, you can see an imprint from the die where it finished. You use that as your reference. You take your bar again. You match it up to your B pillar so that your bend is the angle you want. And you mark that on the tube. Once you have that marked, throw it in the bender, slide it in. You leave your tubes long so that it sits down into the floor. You sit it up tight to where you want it, and you cut the tube off. Then you slide the plates underneath, and you're ready to go. So now that we got the main roll hoop in, we're ready to go with the front half of the car. So for the front half of the car, we're going to have a bar that comes from the main roll hoop, follows the roof line, follows the windshield post, the A pillar, all the way down into the floor. You can go, bend your first bend, and then once you got your first bend, you can figure out where your second one's going to be. To our first bend, we decided that we wanted about 30 to 32 inches, give us a little bit extra room to cut off later. Put our bend reference. And you always put an arrow designating which side of the bend you're going to be bending on. So the bend is on this side of it. This is the start. The bend goes this way. So we got a little Princess Auto special, which is basically just a knockoff yeah. of whatever. JD squared Model 3. It's a, just a typical bender. Manual benders are pretty well all the same. So one of the very critical things when you're using a bender is that it's level. Basically, if it's not level, all your bends will turn to offset bends, whether you want it or not. You'll have a crooked main roll hoop, it won't look good. It's just not as nice if you have any bends on it. The way I've done it is I'm mounted to a trailer, basically. So I've got the trailer leveled out. So I've got three points of contact, two jacks at the back, one at the front. You just jack it up, you put your level on your bender, get it to the point where it's level, and leave it there. Standard design, you've got your die, you've got a follower over here that the tube rides in. 
the die will have a place to clamp the tube to, and you have a ratcheting style, this is a ratcheting style bender. So you have your handle, which pulls on this ratchet, you ratchet it to go to your degrees you want, which is indicated by your uh, degree wheel here. So we got our bend reference. That's where we want to bend off of. We want to bend on this side of the tube. Put the side of the tube you want to bend into the die. I chose as my reference point the start of this die. So if you can see that face right there, that is where I chose to use as my reference. Slide it in, throw the clamp on, this in. So once you got your tube in, you add a little preload to it. Basically, you could think that's zero or that's zero, but this is where the bend's gonna start. So I like to use my ratchet, add a little bit of pressure to it. And then I set zero on the follower. So, come over here. This is just a piece of welding wire that I use as my indicator. Set that right to zero, and then you start bending. And we are bending it to? 35 degrees. 35 degrees, there we go. Good to go. So the front we have boxes as well that are gonna mount the tube so we can slide it down to the floor and we can get the cage down to fully weld it. You need to get all the way around as per all the rules that for building a roll cage. So this allows us to slide it down and have room to get the TIG welder in up top to get the full weld. So for building the boxes, we just decided where we wanted the uh, tube to land on the floor based off of the dash bar and uh, cut a spot for the tube to slide through. And then basically you just take it and you make templates to follow your contours, and uh, build out a box. Leave that so you can slide it off and on, so you can drop the tube down to be able to weld it. So once you got that done, you're ready to start with uh, fitting your A-pillar bar. Your A-pillar bar is a little bit different than your main roll cage, because it's not just a flat surface. It's not a single plane. You actually have an offset in it. Because if you look at a windshield, it actually comes out. The car gets wider as you go down to the dash. So you have to compensate for that when you build it. So you start as every other bend would start. You go from your top, you work your way down. Once we had that, figured out the angle based off of measuring the uh, angle of the roof. Get that. And then you have to figure out your offset. Now for the offset, you kind of just got to eyeball it. Fortunately, there's no really good way to measure it. You just kind of got to hold the dial indicator up and lean it over until you match the angle of your uh, A pillar. and. That's your offset. For us, it turned out to be 15 degrees. Worked out really well. Um, if you need a little more offset, then unfortunately there's no real good way to add it afterwards, so you kind of got to start again. Always better to go with a little bit less offset because you can always push the tube out. Can't really bring the tube back in if it's already in the door. Okay, so we're ready for the second bend now. So, we use our reference of the end of the first bend. So you can feel on the tube where it's been deformed a little bit because it's in the bender. So right there, you kind of feel the end of the bend. Put your mark there, and then we're coming out 21 inches to our next bend, to the start. Oh. 21 inches. Mark our bend side. We're good to go into the bender. Okay, so when you're doing a second bend on any tube, it's critical if you don't want an offset to make sure it's level. We want an offset, so we'll put it in the bender and then line up that angle. Hold down clamp on. Hold down screw. Add a little bit of preload to it. I'm gonna tighten this a little bit so it doesn't fall. So, we need to be 15 degrees, and it was up on this tube. On these, it doesn't really matter because you got two. One's gonna be the left, one's gonna be the right. There we go, 15 degrees up. Double checking everything for sanity's sake. Die is still zero degrees, dead on. Boom. <laughs> 15 degrees, perfect. Well, the last one was down, so this one's gonna be up. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter for the first one, second one's gonna exactly. be up. Exactly. So, oh, the tape boss. <laughs> Almost forgot what angle I was measuring for two. 55 degrees. Okay, there we go. Let's bend it up. <laughs> Don't worry, guys, I got it. Just watch my windshield. Yeah, watch the windshield. Probably <laughs> getting splatter all over it, are you? Yeah. <laughs> it's not even denying it. Yeah. <laughs> Try not to. Yeah, so we make it, and it, it's much, much quicker to make it. Uh, tick welding is a lot stronger, and it and it's very nice if you have somebody that can tick weld very nicely. Um, but the MIG welding will do totally fine for wh what what they're gonna do. I don't think 
Rich plans on taking us off a cliff or anything. But oh, uh, there's Pike's Peak. <laughs> Basically, you end up starting with your main hoop here. Um, just because it's the longest and most amount of material that you're going to use other than the door pillars. So basically stick your main hoop in, put your door pillars in, and then kind of fit up all your littler pieces. Um, take the time and fit it up good, otherwise uh, that way you don't have any big gaps and frankly it's a lot safer to have the material safe, nice and tight. So for our purposes we chose a six point roll cage. So the way roll cages work is there's oh, an infinite number of points, but two, four, six, and eight is typical roll cages. A two point roll cage is just basically a roll bar. So it's just got a singular roll bar that goes up and over. A four point typically will have bracing, either forwards or back. A four point would be, say, the main roll hoop and coming down to the front. We chose a six point, which has the main roll hoop, front bars, and an X brace in the back. If you wanted to have an eight point, you would have more structure from the front generally, or the back, depending on how the cage is built. And that would be for more something, more serious racing, drag racing, or mountain climbing, or <laughs> whatever you want to do. Yeah. Um, so for our uh, six point cage, we chose to use inch and three quarter tubing. We chose 120 wall. Most rules that require you to have a six point cage require 118 wall tubing. 125 wall gives you kind of a safety barrier. So sometimes in your bends, it'll thin out on the outside because you're stretching the tubing. So that gives you enough room to, if they check the tubing right in the bend, you're still gonna pass tech. So we started with the main roll hoop because that's the center of the car. That's your thing that determines everything else for the rest of the cage. We had to come down to the door posts so when we came down, it, we landed it as far out as possible so it hugs the body lines nice and tight. So these allow us to be able to mount the cage to something nice and strong. It's got a large footprint. Most rules require a six by six mounting point, so that's what we did here. And it is built so that it is contacting all the way along with a plate on the floor to add a little bit extra bracing under there. You work forwards from there. So once you measure up your front bars, you make them so they're nice and tight to the roof, follow the slope of the A-pillar, and then right, run right down. We have another set of boxes up there, again, to allow us to drop the cage down to weld it in. We added our dash bar and our windshield bar. So these add a lot of structure to the cage. They are what really stops it from being able to uh, rack sideways if you roll over, say. Um, these are have a little bit of a bend in them, just to follow the lines of the car nicely. If your car is different, you can add a little more bend or a little less. Some cars you don't even need to add a bend. Um, our roof bar has the exact same thing to uh, clear Rich's vision, because he's a little bit tall up there. <laughs> So once you get these bars in, then you can work backwards. For our back bracing, we chose to add an X bracing. So for X bracing, you typically, and most rules require you to have one solid bar from corner to corner. So you weld that one in first, just tack it. You don't want to weld anything solid until you know you like it. And then you get your second one in. So you can pick up one of these tube notches, uh, which cuts a nice hole in there and, and does a nice angle. This one's for Prince's Auto. Um, not badly built. The issue is you can't go all the way through the pipe for some reason, but it also acts as a hand device to just cut your notch with a with a angle grinder, which is what most guys prefer yeah. to do. I guess that is what it is. Here we go. Your second bar is two pieces, so you typically start with the top, work your way down again, and we've got plates on our wheel wells. So we need to put a little bit of a bend around the wheel well where this plate is going to sit. So we'll just stick it in the press. Nice big gap, and then because we have enough plate left over, I'll cut the nicest six six inches out of the bend. Because it's curved, you kind of have to get clever with that. So we chose to bend it in the around the arch of the wheel wheel this way, and then we cut it into strips, laid them on, hammered them to match the curve of the wheel wheel, and weld them together. That gives us, again, our six by six mounting point that our post lines up to. So our X bracing is uh, not quite as far back as most cars typically have it. The further back you go, obviously the stronger it's gonna be, and you'd prefer to go to like a frame rail or even the top of the wheel well or something a little stronger than this, but because there's so many turbos back here, kinda had to put it here. We are kinda forced onto this location. But plenty strong here for what Rich is doing. We actually chose to only go with a single X. Most cars will also have an X in the roof or some other additional bracing, but for what we're doing, this will be plenty. You could also add some bracing up in the uh, windshield area or up in these corners. If you really want to get carried away and you want it super strong and have no way of ever failing, you can add some small gussets, small triangular pieces up in the corners, and the same within the X bracing. 
Um, but for what we're doing, the car's gonna fall apart well before the cage does. <laughs> TIG welding, make aluminum, stainless, anything and everything. Anything right that's on. gonna pay the bills. Well, thanks for <laughs> thanks for help. Appreciate it. So. Uh, turned out beautiful for yeah. uh, oh, a weekend's worth of work. Yeah. For having me. It, was, it was good. Right on. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hey, it's Matt from Bustin' Knuckle Films, and you're watching The Boss Garage. Subscribe.